Hi everyone, welcome back to Library Time with Mrs. Poole. All right, my last kitten and cat themed story for this week is called Coco's Kitten. This is a nonfiction story, so it is a true story, and it is written by Dr. Francine Patterson, and photographs are by Ronald H. Cohn. Such a funny combination to see a gorilla with a kitten, right? All right, here we go. The story of Coco's kitten. I want to just first show you a picture of Coco when Coco was just a baby. Hmm? Coco's full name is Hanabi Ko, which is Japanese for fireworks child. She was born on the 4th of July. Every year I have a party for Coco with cake, sparkling apple cider, and lots of presents. Coco knows what birthdays are. When asked what she does on her birthday, Coco answered, eat, drink, get old. Three days before Coco's party, I said, I'm going shopping today. What do you want for your birthday? Cereal there. Good there, drink, Coco signed. But what presents do you want, I asked. Cat, answered Coco. Later, she repeated, cat. Cat, cat. So they taught Coco to use American Sign Language to communicate with them. So she knows how to sign words to answer their questions. I wasn't surprised that Coco asked for a cat. I have been reading to Coco for many years and two of her favorite stories have been Puss in Boots and The Three Little Kittens. Coco gets very involved in the stories I read her. When reading the stories of the three little kittens who lose their mittens, Coco sees that their mother is angry and that the kittens are crying. Mad, Coco signs. Coco loves picture books. Gorilla books are her favorites. Cat books are next. She likes to go off on her own with a book to study the pictures and sign to herself. On her birthday, I gave Coco the usual assortment of presents, apple juice, some special fruits and nuts, and a baby doll. I didn't want to give Coco a stuffed toy because I knew she'd eventually destroy it. The only durable cat toy I could find was in a mail order catalog, and I ordered it right away. It was made of cement and covered with vinyl and black velvet. I chose it because it looked real and it was sturdy, gorilla proof. The toy cat didn't arrive in time for Coco's birthday, so I decided to save it for Christmas. In December, I made a list for Coco. I drew about 20 pictures, fruits, vegetables, nuts, dolls, combs, and blankets. Every year, Coco gets a stocking and lots of presents. She loves Christmas. What do you want for Christmas? I asked as I showed Coco the pictures. Coco carefully studied the booklet. Then she pointed to a doll nuts and a cat. I bought Coco some nuts and a new doll. I wrapped the toy cat and put it with the rest of her presents. So that's Penny. That's who takes care and works and studies with Coco. On Christmas morning, Coco ate her cereal and opened her stocking. It was filled with nuts. Coco threw the nuts aside and went to her next present. Coco unwrapped a doll. That stink, Coco signed. Then came the velvet cat. That red, she signed. Coco often uses the word red to express anger. Coco was very upset. She started running back and forth, banging on her walls. She was doing display charges past me. They were angry, angry charges. It is natural for gorillas to display when frightened or in great danger. They run sideways, pound their chests, then go down on all fours and run back and forth. But this was Christmas, usually a happy day for Coco, and she was with people she loved. Later in the day, Barbara, a friend who had known Coco since she was a baby gorilla, arrived. That looks like a black cat, Barbara said to Coco. Would you show it to me? Coco did not answer. She pulled a blanket over her head. Could I see it, Barbara asked. Coco pulled a rag over the toy cat and then tossed it in the air. Cat that, Coco signed. Please let me see it, said Barbara. 
Coco gave her a toy dinosaur instead. I finally understood Coco's strange behavior. She was unhappy with her Christmas present. I had made a mistake. Coco did not want a cement and velvet toy cat. Coco wanted a real cat. Coco wanted a pet. There's Coco with the doll. And that's a picture of what the cement cat looked like. It really did look real. But it didn't move and breathe and purr and do all those things like a real cat does, huh? Things don't always happen quickly where we live. Every day is full of its own activities. So it was almost six months later when Karen, one of my assistants, arrived with three kittens. The kittens had been abandoned by their mother and raised by a dog, a Karen Terrier. Karen showed the kittens to Coco. Love that, Coco signed. As we showed Coco the kittens, she gave each one her blow test. When Coco meets a new animal or person, she blows in their face. I think she is trying to get a better scent. When she blows at a person, she expects them to blow back. Maybe she expected the kittens to blow back too. The first kitten was smoky gray and white. Coco's blow test took him by surprise. The second kitten was a tailless gray tabby. He was also startled by the blow test. The third kitten, a brown tabby, did not react at all. After the blow test, Coco seemed to have made some judgments about the kittens. Which one do you want, we asked. That, signed Coco, pointing to the tailless tabby. I am not sure why Coco picked the gray tabby as her favorite. I never asked her. Perhaps it was because he didn't have a tail. A gorilla has no tail. That night, all three kittens went home with Karen. Two days later, the kittens came back for another visit. Coco was happy to see them. Visit, love, tiger cat, Coco signed. First, she picked up the smoky gray and white one. Then, Coco took the tailless tabby and carried him on her thigh. After a while, she pushed him up on the back of her neck. Baby, Coco signed. She cradled the tabby in her legs and examined its paws. Coco squeezed and the tabby's claws came out. Cat, do scratch, Coco signed. Coco, love. What will you name the kitty, I asked. All ball, Coco signed. Yes, I said, like a ball, he has no tail. Ball stayed overnight as a visiting kitten. By the end of the week, Ball was a permanent member of our household. Coco had her kitten at last. Look how little the kitten is in her arms. For the first few weeks, Ball lived in my house. Every evening at six o'clock, I would take Ball to Coco's trailer for an evening visit. I carried the kitten in my pocket as I prepared Coco for bed. Coco soon grew accustomed to this routine. What happens at night, I asked. All Ball, signed Coco. Right, I said, Ball visits you at night. When he was older, Ball snuck into Coco's trailer by himself. It worried me in the beginning. I did not know how Coco would treat the kitten unsupervised. As it turned out, Coco was always gentle. Ball was never afraid of her. Kittens should not be separated from their mothers until they are at least six weeks old. Poor Ball was abandoned by his mother at birth which might have accounted for some of his faults. Ball was an unusual cat. He was very aggressive. He would go up to people and bite them for no reason. He would bite Coco too. Cat bite, obnoxious, Coco signed, but she never struck back. Coco did not like to be scratched or bitten, but she loved Ball in spite of his naughty behavior. Tell me a story about Ball, I said. Coco loved Ball, she signed.
Coco treated Ball as if he were her baby. The very first time she picked him up, she tried to tuck him in her thigh. That's where mother gorillas put their infants. Older babies are carried on their mother's backs. Coco tried this with Ball too. Coco was a good gorilla mother. She combed and patted Ball to keep him clean. She also examined his eyes, ears, and mouth to make sure he was healthy. It was Coco who discovered Ball's ear mites. Ear mites are these little bugs that get into animals' ears and it causes their ears to be very itchy. So you need to get some medicine, special medicine to put it in their ears, little drops, and it gets rid of them. So Coco was so good at taking care of Ball, he was able to discover ear mites. That's pretty impressive. Ball was often a topic of conversation during Coco's lessons. Love visit, Coco signed when Ball and I arrived for a morning lesson. Ball, I said. Trouble, signed Coco. Love. Coco seemed to enjoy conversations about her kitten. This dialogue took place between Coco and a research assistant named Janet. I'll give you some grapes if you tell me about Ball the cat, Janet said. Soft, Coco signed. What kind of animal is he? Janet asked. Cat, 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 Coco answered. Do you love Ball? Soft, good cat, cat, Coco signed. In addition to sign language, art is another way I test Coco's perceptions. Ball lay with a green toy on an orange towel. I gave Coco a canvas and some paints and asked her to draw, and asked her to draw a ball. Coco had 10 colors to choose from. First, she picked black for Ball's body. Next, she picked orange for the towel and green for the toy. What about Ball's eyes, I asked. Coco picked tan. So that top picture is what Coco was looking at with Ball on his orange towel and green toy. And then this is the picture that Coco drew. Quite a talented gorilla. Coco loves to play games. Her favorites are chase, blow it, and tickle. Coco likes to be tickled and she thinks that others will like it too. Tickle, Coco signed to Ball when they were lying on the floor together. Ball was not a good tickler, nor did he like to be tickled. So Coco and I pretended. I tickled Coco while carrying the kitten in my hand. Coco thought this was very funny. Chase, blow it, enjoy, Coco signed to Ball. In blow it, Coco blows as hard as she can into the face of her playmate. It's not hard to understand why this game was not one of Ball's favorites. Chase is similar to tag. Players run back and forth and chase each other. This is a popular game among gorillas in the wild, but Ball never quite caught on to chase. Coco did not realize that kittens don't necessarily enjoy gorilla games. Coco did understand that kittens like warmth, affection, and attention, and Coco supplied plenty. Here's the sad page. Bear with me. On a foggy December morning, one of the assistants told me that Ball had been hit by a car. He had died instantly. I was shocked and unprepared. I didn't realize how attached I had grown to Ball and I had no idea how the news would affect Coco. The kitten meant so much to her. He was Coco's baby. I went to Coco at once. I told her that Ball had been hit by a car. She would not see him again. Coco did not respond. I thought she didn't understand, so I left the trailer. Ten minutes later, I heard Coco cry. It was her distress call, a loud, long series of high-pitched hoots. I cried too. Three days later, Coco and I had a conversation about Ball. Do you want to talk about your kitty? I asked. Cry, Coco signed. 
Can you tell me more about it, I asked. Blind, she signed. We don't see him anymore, do we? What happened to your kitty, I asked. Sleep, cat, Coco signed. A few weeks later, Coco saw a picture of a gray tabby who looked very much like Ball. She pointed to the picture and signed, cry, sad, frown. It was an unhappy time. News of All Ball's death traveled quickly. We received thousands of letters. People of all ages wrote to us and expressed their sympathy. Some sent cards, others sent photographs, and many children created pictures. They all had one message, that Coco should have a new kitten. As we approached Christmas, I wanted to get Coco a new kitten. I had no idea how difficult that would turn out to be. On December 20th, Barbara asked Coco, what would you like for Christmas? Cat, cat, tiger, cat, was Coco's reply. We heard of a Manx who was soon expecting a litter. We waited weeks until we discovered that the cat was just getting fat. Christmas came and went. In January, I showed Coco a picture of three kittens. One had a long tail, one had a short tail, and one was tailless. When you get another kitty, what kind would you like, I asked. That, Coco signed as she pointed to the tailless kitty. We'll get you a kitty like that, I said. Is that okay? Good, nice, Coco answered. How do you feel about kitties, I asked. Cat Gorilla have visit, she signed. Coco love. Coco was ready for a new kitten, if only I could find one. More time went by. I called the Humane Society. They had no kittens at all let alone a rare tailless Manx. I called many other places and was disappointed again and again. I was told that not many kitties were born during that time of year. The worst part of this period was my feeling that I was letting Coco down. I'd watch as someone would ask Coco, where's your cat? And she would look around almost as if she were doing a double take, as if she were looking for ball. Then our luck changed. We received a letter from a breeder of Manx cats who wanted to help. He didn't have any kittens then, but he called other Manx breeders nearby until he located a litter of Manx kittens in Southern California. They were just about ready to leave their mother. We set the date for March 17th. The day before I told Coco she was getting a new kitty, a red kitty. Red is Coco's favorite color. She was very excited. Then another delay. The breeder called. I'm sorry, he said, the kitten is not coming today. Coco was upset. I was disappointed. Trouble, she signed. We are having trouble getting you a new kitty. We have been trying very hard, I explained. Finally, on March 24th, a red tiger striped Manx was brought to our home. Seeing the kitten, Coco purred with pleasure. It was a wonderful moment. She placed him on her chest and petted him. Let me hold the kitty, I said, but Coco wouldn't let go. She kissed and cradled her kitten. Baby, she signed. Coco was happy. Her new kitten had come to stay. There's Coco with her new kitten who she named Lipstick. The end. That is one of my favorites, Coco's Kitten. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Looking forward to sharing more stories again with you soon. Until next time, everyone. Happy reading.